Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on which part of the earth you live in. And welcome to this new installment of a, in an important series of webinars detailing the incredible case of Taiji Men. I am Marco Spinti, an Italian national. I work as a journalist and I serve as director in charge of Peter Winter, the online magazine that informs daily on religious liberty violations and the state of human rights throughout the world. Bitter Winter can be read freely on the web at bitterwinter.org and is an operation of Chesno, Center for Studies on New Religions, based in Turin, Italy, and co-hosts of today's webinar with Human Rights Without Frontier, or HRWF. Today, among our distinguished uh, speakers, we have Professor Massimo Introvigne and uh, Mr. Vili Fautre, directors respectively of Chesnur and HRWF. We at Bitter Winter have a special section on Taiji Man and its case. So far, we have published more than 80 articles in that section, and this indicates the importance of this serious case of violation of religious liberty. Today, we will focus on one of the most staggering aspects of the persecution waged against Taiji men, its duration. In fact, Taiji men, Shifu and Dizi are now facing the round figure of 25 years of persecution during which all sorts of wrongdoings have been perpetrated against them a quarter of a century. It is hard to believe, but it is sadly true. It is hard to believe, especially because Taiji Man is completely innocent, as courts of law have started, stated, demonstrated, and repeated several times. Let me just briefly summarize the facts. Taiji Man is a Menpei, Menpai, a Chinese world similar to a school of Qigong self-cultivation and martial arts. It was established in its modern form in Taiwan by Dr. Hong Tao Tse, who is also very well known throughout the world for his, for his, for his, his activities. In 1996, a politically motivated crackdown in Taiwan targeted several spiritual movements accused of not having supported the presidential candidate who eventually won the election in that year. Taiji Men was also a target, although in fact it had not taken any political position and Dr. Hong, his wife and two Dizi were arrested. Eventually, Taiwan's Supreme Court declared the defendants innocent of all charges. However, in parallel to the criminal prosecution a tax case had been started and tax bills issued. Although the Supreme Court had clarified that there had been no tax evasion based on a technicality, the National Taxation Bureau maintained the tax bill for the year 1992. Because of this bill, in 2020, land intended for building a self-cultivation center for Taiji men was sized auctioned unsuccessfully for two times and then confiscated. This generated widespread street protest in Taiwan, which continue to this day. Taiji Man Dizi have suffered violence and abuses. They have been also as falsely as incredibly accused of raising goblins. The situation in some is unbelievable. This is why after many important public events taking place in person and online in different parts of the world, human rights activists and scholars decided to take action by writing directly to Dr. Tsai Ing Wen, President of the Republic of China, in favor of Taiji Men. This happened on December the 13th, very recently. Everyone can read their open letter in Bitter Winter, we published it, and later, and, and the letter is all the more important 
because it comes from independent observers. Let me just briefly quote from that letter. The drama, the signers of the letter say, is obviously detrimental to the hard earned fame of Taiwan as a beacon of democracy and human rights in a region plugged by dictatorships. Referring to the false tax evasion accusation and the government sizing of Taishman property, the signers add, it may seem that this is a battle about money, but in fact, it is not. Taishman has spent in legal, in legal fees alone in 25 years of struggles, more than they would have paid had they settled with the National Taxation Bureau. It was in fact for reason of conscience and justice that they refused to settle. By settling, they would have admitted that they were guilty of tax evasion, something that it is against their principles and factual truth, end of quote. Another quote, they conclude the scholars in the letter, after 25 years, frankly, it cannot be enough to answer that this matter should be solved at the administrative or judiciary level. This has already been promised before and has not happened. At this stage, only an intervention by the government and the president of Taiwan can rectify the discriminatory act action of the National Taxation Bureau and the National Enforcement Agency. Only they can cancel the unjust tax bill and give back to Taiji men their sacred land. Experience has taught that without this political intervention, nothing will happen. It is no longer only a group of concerned Taiwanese citizens. It is a larger international community of scholars and human rights activists that urges you to act decisively and urgently, end of quote. Principles, truth, acts of reparation are the key words of this important letter. I am very proud to be one of its signers. Let me then open our webinar today, welcoming all scholars, experts, testimonial, testimonials, and audience. And let us now begin our program by viewing, viewing an important video which is premiering for the first time in English now.检察官用你的眼神就可以判断That day, I witnessed a scene that was only possible from a movie. Watching the inspectors rush in with ammunition, we all froze. In the loud scolding like in slow motion, though no one opened fire, the camera flashed in front of my eyes felt like continuous gunfire, so dazzling and unreal. Frowning, squinting, there were many doubts in my heart, but looking at the detained people and objects, my body started to shake uncontrollably. This must be a dream, a nightmare. Tears blurred my vision. I squeezed my arm only to find that this was a reality, more terrifying than a nightmare. I needed to wake up, needed someone to tell me what happened. This is just a nightmare after all. On December 19, 1996, 
Prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren, in the name of a religious crackdown, searched 12 Taijiman academies with 19 troops, accompanied by major media outlets, as if he wanted to paint a heroic image under the spotlight, rather than to pursue the truth. Later, he filed an extremely outrageous indictment against the Dongmenren of Taijimen, fabricated crimes of fraud, abused the power of authority, forced coercion to obtain confessions, and forged documents. The whole process severely damaged the people's trust in the judicial system. With the media's lavish reports and ridiculous exaggeration, suddenly the Taijiman thieves have fell victim to this political purge. It is obvious that Ho Kuan tried to exterminate Taijiman, and the plan was working. The innocent and kindness of the group were erased overnight, leaving the pure white uniforms cast in shadow. Thousands of families were victimized, and the harm endured was not explainable with words. Taijimen has been innocent from the beginning. Many Taijimen thieves decry injustice as Taijimen has suffered unjustified cases of extermination for no reason. It is the Zhangmen of Taijimen Academy and his wife who suffer the most, but they and their disciples have never given up on defending their innocence. After many efforts, the criminal case was finally determined by the Supreme Court of Taiwan in 2007. Taijimen was not guilty and had no tax evasion. The Supreme Court also confirmed the nature of the Jing Shili as gifts, and there was no taxation problem. All innocent defendants received national compensation, further proving that this case was a false case from the beginning. A few short sentences, less than 30 seconds, but behind it was a long 10 years and 7 months, the criminal court summoned about 200 witnesses, 58 courts, and took a total of 9,570 minutes. Every minute, every second carries with it countless blood, tears, and grievances. Finally, the belated justice of the innocence from the criminal case was ushered, but the taxation derived from the criminal case did not end as it should have. Due to the corruption of the NTB and the administrative court, a whole new round of nightmares began. but not only was the tax bill not revoked, the Administrative Enforcement Agency of the Ministry of Justice, Xinzu Branch, also enforced the option of Taijun's land in Miaoli Mountain. It is intolerable. We have been bullied for too long. So we decided to put on our headscarves, protest on the streets, clench our fists. We roared. What did we do wrong? This roar has lasted for 25 years. 25 years! 9,125 days, a quarter of a century. How many people have dedicated the best time in their lives for this? They were youth, filled with righteous indignation. Now they are gray-haired human rights fighters. They were young and beautiful women. Now they hold the hands of their children while protesting on the street. They were cheerful and innocent children. Now they stand on the front line speaking through the microphone. They were even allies who could not resist the passage of time, who passed away before justice arrived.
In this, in this violent storm, storm he no longer has another existence like, like a parallel universe. universe. All, All because of Zangren's great, great spirit, he waved, waved his leaves and said, we still, we still have to be patriotic, because, because we love this land, land we have, have to fight. fight. So, so we dried our tears and continued to roar, but this, this time the scene was different. We are promoting, promoting Chinese martial arts, arts with traditional weapons and feather fans to show, to show the beauty and essence of the culture. In front, in front of the president's office, where we were protesting, we are, we are now celebrating the nation's birthday. We were, we were invited ten, ten times to perform at the national birthday celebration, and in eight, eight times we performed on Kedagalan Boulevard. We did, we did an important opening at the 2017 Universide. We won, won the martial arts championship in Japan, and performed, performed at the Sydney Opera, Opera House during the Olympics to promote love and peace. Our group has traveled across five continents to, to countless countries to promote the importance of conscience. In our, In our homeland, we protest on the streets, but, but in the United Nations, we received countless compliments. It was, it was not, not that there was no pain, pain. tears never, never stopped flowing, but because we care, we endure the sorrow. Because of faith, we bear the humiliation. This is all because we hope to show our smiles. Our hometown is surrounded by the sea and the persecution put us in a situation like that of an isolated island. Fortunately, when we reached out for help, what we got was assistance from outside the island. Because of how absurd the case is, it has received a lot of attention by the international community that values human rights. Professor Kenneth Jacobson, the former advisor to the US President Clinton, who has been following the case for a long time, published an article after studying the case and said that the prosecutor's way of handling the case is so absurd that his mental health is questionable. The mere statement of that would cause individuals and should cause individuals to question the sanity of the prosecutor. Dr. Massimo Intravene, the Italian founder of the research from New Religions and Belief, which helps those suffering from religious persecution, mentioned this is not a domestic or technical tax case, but a human rights case based on freedom of religion or belief. He also stressed that there is no time limitation to fight against human rights persecution, and that the international community has the responsibility to help resolve this case together. In San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, Honolulu, and New York, we have been protesting in front of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office. In December 2021, we went to the political center of the world, Washington, D.C., to petition in front of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office. Those who walked or drove by expressed their support by honking or thumbing up, and some even joined us in holding protest posters. We have visited many scholars and experts in many countries and talked about the case. They all expressed shock and inconceivability their support shows us that we are not alone on this road of seeking justice, that we are not helplessly isolated. We only hope the Taiwanese authorities will open their eyes and not trap themselves due to their inactions. On September 19, 2020, a group of volunteers from the Legal and Tax Reform League was holding posters at a crossroads in Xinzhou when all of a sudden a big group of police officers showed up questioning the volunteers. The atmosphere then was very tense and the police officers started to shout at the volunteers. During the chaos, an officer forcefully stuffed the sign into the hands of one of the volunteers, Ms. Huang. The officer accused her of criminal behavior and handcuffed her without explaining why. Without knowing what crime she has committed, Ms. Huang was taken to Liu Jia police station, then transferred to the district prosecutor's office overnight. An innocent volunteer was tortured for almost eight hours. After she was released by the prosecutor's office, she felt dizzy and was sent to a hospital. She was later diagnosed with acute stress disorder. The next day, the precinct chief of Zhubei Xinzhu County Police Bureau held a press conference trying to discredit Ms. Huang. 
He smeared an unarmed elderly volunteer as a criminal, lying about the truth of the incident which is very similar to the process of the Taijman tax case 25 years ago, first detaining and intimidating innocent people, then publicly denouncing the innocent in front of the media. For us who have been persecuted for 25 years, it is like sprinkling salt on our wounds, adding fuel to the fire. We thought this would have happened in a totalitarian state, but it unbelievably happened to us at a place we know so well in a so-called democratic country. But even so, we are not giving up, because we love our country, because we want it to become a better place. For 25 years, we have not been afraid. No matter how hard the rain falls, how hot the blazing sun shines, the raging fire in our hearts will never be extinguished. What ignites the fire is the anger from being mistreated. What ignites the fire is the pain the taxation victims suffered. What ignites the fire is the perseverance to pursue justice. Even if there is more injustice, more pains, we will still roar. As long as the case is not resolved, we will not give up. We will continue to move forward. If the fabricated Taijiman tax case is not redressed, the raging fire will never be extinguished. You could see the, the case is pretty serious and the video uh, conveying us all to emotion described it perfectly. So let me open up this uh, today's webinar uh, starting the first section, session uh, by giving the floor to Ms. Angelica Bertino. She's an attorney, an Italian attorney, member of Fed Insieme Committee and member of also of Orlier the International Observatory of Religious Liberty of Refugees. Ms. Bertino, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be among you. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Angelica Bertino. I'm an Italian civil lawyer. I'm a member of Fede Insieme and Orlil and I deal, among other things, with the international protection of political refugees and those persecuted for uh, religious reasons. Uh, I had the opportunity to deepen the judicial case of the Tajiman movement and Dr. Hong, also confronting myself on the matter with my colleague, uh, the lawyer Francesco Curto, which was a previous host in this series of webinars. Uh, I fully agree with that with what the colleague said about the violation of uh, a fundamental principle of a legal system in tax matters, for instance, equality and consistency. But today I would like to add something more to what the colleague said. Uh, in my work with the Fede Insieme Committee and Orlir, I've seen various forms of persecution of individuals and religious movements. Some of, the, of these forms are often bloody, involving the use of violence, other involve the use of stratagems aimed at conditioning the public opinion, such as conveying false and disparaging information about the group of people targeted, as well as the banning of certain religious practice. This form of persecution, we know, have a long history. If we go back to the Roman times here in Europe, the persecution suffered by the Christian immediately comes to our minds, a persecution that began first by spreading false information about the so-called nocturnal rites, and then by banning worship. Since that time, many years have passed by and social complexity has increased. We know that a state, wherever it is, needs an economic and financial system supported by taxes in order to survive. Here then, in modern societies, a new way of persecuting spiritual movements and their adherents has emerged. In fact, modern societies have learned that if you want to denigrate someone, to discredit him and therefore to stop him, all you have to do is make a fiscal check and through uh, a creative interpretation of the tax assumption declared by the taxpayer, you can give a new interpretation to the fact. This is what happened to the Tejiman movement movement and to Dr. Hong, who since December 19, 1996 have suddenly find themselves in a circle of hell. 
the circle is made of criminal charges based on lies or misrepresentation of the facts and the data, confiscation of property and long curve patterns. The giving of money through the ritual of the red envelope is a well-known mode of donating in Taiwanese culture. Therefore, the alteration of the meaning and significance that the public administration has operated on this ritual is nothing less than absurd. From the document I had the opportunity to study, I learned that fortunately for Dr. Hong and the Taiji government, even if in a partial way, justice has been done. The recognition that for the years 1991, 1993, 1994, 1995, and 1996 of the ritual of the red envelopes, envelopes meaning donation and not payment for service, was an excellent achievement, bringing the right order to things. Nevertheless, that leaves 1992, the year for which there is a ruling that gives a, a different interpretation of the right. On this point, I believe uh, that my colleague, Mr. Francesco Curto, is, saying, uh, is right in saying that there has been a real violation of the principle of equality and the principle of consistency. But a question arises, why violate this principle? And here we come back to the point I was making earlier about persecution. I personally uh, think that it is essential to raise awareness of what is happening to the Teji uh, men movement and not wrong. And you have my full support and the support of Fede Insieme and Orlir. On December 20, it was the International Day of Human Solidarity, a day which is, was established by the United Nations General Assembly in, 20, in 2005, identifying solidarity as one of the fundamental and universal values that should on the right relation between people. Looking and what you, at what you're doing, mobilizing professionals to speak from around the world, to speak out on your case, I think you have the solidarity, all the solidarity in the world in this battle of yours. I've heard very good things about you from my colleague, Mr. Francesco Curto, and I know that your main aim is to spread the culture of peace in the world. I believe there cannot be nobler thing than this. But we know this is an arduous path, not without obstacles. Selfishness and exploitation of people for selfish purposes are main obstacles to the realization of a war in which the culture of peace prevails. A culture of peace, which I would remind, I would like to remind you, as my colleague Francesco Curta always says, is not a war in which conflicts are absent, because diversity implies the existence of conflicts, it's in the natural state of things, but it's a world in which conflicts are resolved in an enlightenment way. So thank you again for inviting me. I was very brief <laughs> and for allowing me to share these thoughts with you. I hope or, uh, that you or better we can find an enlightenment solution to these issues and hopefully we can meet soon in person. Have a nice prosecute of the webinar. Thank you so much, Ms. Bertino, for um, addressing so graciously the, the topic of, um, of today, solidarity with Taiji men. And you, you had wonderful uh, words of appreciation and uh, of solidarity. This is very important for someone like Tajiman Chifundizi, who's uh, suffering every day since a quarter of a century. We now move to this our second um, panelist for, for this first session, uh, Professor Massimo Introvigne, founder of the uh, Center for the Studies on New Religions and editor in chief of uh, Peter Winter magazine. Professor Introvigne, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Marco. <clears throat> we continue to celebrate the International Human Solidarity Day, but let's not forget uh, that at least in uh, this part of the world, many of us are also busy preparing for Christmas. And uh, Christmas is a time of miracles. In Europe, every year, several media and TV channels 
go back to the Christmas of 1843 and present again uh, different versions of what is perhaps the greatest Christmas tale ever written, a uh, Christmas carol by British novelist Charles Dickens. Uh, many of you know it, but perhaps less in uh, Taiwan. Uh, a Christmas Carol is the story of a greedy old uh, businessman called Ebenezer Scrooge, who refuses uh, all forms of uh, human solidarity and only cares for money. On Christmas Eve, while he sleeps, Scrooge is visited by four ghosts. The first is his deceased business partner, who was as greedy as Scrooge and is now punished and should wander the earth carrying heavy money boxes and chains for all the eternity. The other three are the spirits of Christmas past Christmas present and Christmas yet to come. The first shows to Scrooge how he spent Christmas as a child and as a young man and lost the love of his life because he only loved money. The second informs Scrooge that because of his stinginess, the child of his underpaid employee who has no money to secure proper medical treatment for his son will die. The third shows to Scrooge his future funeral and grave where nobody will mourn him. On Christmas morning, Scrooge wakes up a transformed man. He donates to a charity, raises the salary of his employee, and takes care of the latter son. And from now on, Scrooge will treat everybody with kindness and compassion. Although many in the West know Dickens, Ebenezer Scrooge, there are probably even more who, when hearing the last name Scrooge, will think of a different character, Uncle Scrooge the super rich and the stereotypically greedy uncle of Donald Duck in the Walt Disney comics. Uncle Scrooge was created for Disney by famous cartoonist Karl Barks in 1947, who named him after Dickens' character and originally produced A Christmas Story. While on the surface, Uncle Scrooge is dominated by greediness. At the end of Bark stories, one discovers that he's not really a villain. He has soft spots in his heart and is capable of unpredictable acts of generosity, particularly at Christmas. He is a Scrooge who has already been visited by his ghost. Dickens and Barks and the latter's comics are now seriously discussed by academics as metaphors of post-World War II American society, and in common that they were vaguely Christian, but were not active in organized religion. Dickens was famously critical of Roman Catholicism and evangelicalism, although he was not an atheist. Some of Barks' Uncle Scrooge stories are beautiful Christmas tales, but just as in Dickens' Christmas Carol, there is no religion in these Christmases. Although we can see a deep spiritual meaning in the idea that hearts can be changed and conversion is possible if one has the leader of Taiji Men, Dr. Hong Tao Tzu, would say, turns to conscience. 25 years ago, on December 19, 1996, Dr. Hong, his wife, and two dizzy or disciples were victims of a horrific injustice. They were arrested during a politically motivated crackdown on Taiwan's religious and spiritual minorities, including Taiji men. All dizzy had to suffer media slander and were bullied at work 
and in schools. The Christmas of 96 was their saddest Christmas ever. Happily, as we heard, courts of law later vindicated the Dr. Hong and Taiji men, declaring them innocent of all charges. But less happily, Taiwan's National Taxation Bureau ignored the verdicts of criminal courts, which had also concluded that there was no tax evasion and continued to issue ill-founded tax bills. Finally, maintaining only one of them for the year 92, on which basis sacred land intended for a self-cultivation center of Taiji men was auctioned off and after the auctions had not been successful, confiscated in 2020. This injustice generated the widespread protest and Taiji Mendizi had to note that until, unlike, sorry, unlike both Dickens and Bark Scrooge, bureaucrats in Taiwan were deaf to the voice of conscience. Yet, a miracle happened, or perhaps even two. The first miracle is that Dizzy of all ages, from teenagers and even children to elderly women and men, continued to denounce the injustice for 25 years without losing their determination and passion for truth. Those in Taiwan who believe this protest will simply go away with the passing of the time are wrong. Generation after generation of Taiji men will continue to fight until the case is solved. The second miracle is that dozens of international scholars and human rights activists from all over the world, from Brazil and the United States, to France and Russia and today Mexico, rallied in support of Taiji men. Many religious and spiritual movements are victims of injustice, but the quick and widespread mobilization in favor of Taiji men is unprecedented. These scholars and activists became friends with Dizzy and between themselves creating a global community. And this community will also not go away until the case is solved. In face of evil and injustice, friendship and the passion for truth and justice continue to flourish. This proves that miracles do happen. We now wait for the third miracle, the solution of the Taiji Man case. It may look like a dream, but some dreams are so strong that they end up coming true. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Introvigne, for telling us stories, stories that are miracles and the best of which are even historically true. So uh, our wish for Christmas this year is to see the Taiji Man case solved as soon as possible. Again, thank you. Our third speaker for the first session of today's webinar is Ms. Sara Pozos Bravo. She is a professor at Universidad Saman of Jalisco, Guadalajara, Mexico, and also a columnist. Ms. Pozos Bravo, the floor is yours. Buenos días eh, desde México. Buenas tardes y buenas noches a todos ustedes. Me permitiré leer mis reflexiones para poder facilitar la traducción que el doctor Máximo realizara. I need to activate the audio. Good evening or good morning or uh, whatever uh, from uh, Mexico. And uh, excuse me uh, if uh, I will speak in Spanish 
and you may follow me through the translation that Massimo Introvigne will offer to you. La tentación de los gobiernos por perseguir a ciertas religiones o ciertos grupos religiosos está llegando a extremos que no podemos permitir. The uh, temptation of governments to persecute certain spiritual or religious groups is reaching extremes that we cannot allow. Este asedio lo ejerce lo mismo un gobierno democrático que uno dictatorial, uno elegido democráticamente que uno reelegido unilateralmente, uno que jura sobre la Biblia que uno que jura sobre la Constitución. This siege is exercised by democratic government uh, as well as by dictatorial ones by democratically elected governments, as well as by unilaterally re-elected ones, by those that swear on the Bible, as well as by those who swear on the Constitution. El común denominador de este asedio es que suele hacerse contra nuevos grupos religiosos o contra líderes religiosos de estos grupos. The common denominator of this siege is that it is usually carried out against the new religious groups or against the spiritual leaders of these groups. El asedio, que viola todo derecho humano plenamente reconocido por los instrumentos internacionales de Naciones Unidas, es sistemático, ordenado y permanente. The siege, which violates every human right fully recognized, by the international instruments of the United Nations is systematic, orderly, and permanent. Es constante y sobre todo está disfrazado de legalidad y de respeto por la democracia y los derechos humanos, pero es en realidad una persecución religiosa. It is constant and above all, it is disguised as legality and respect for democracy and even human rights, but is in reality religious persecution. Los instrumentos para llevar a cabo esta persecución puede ser, pueden ser fiscales mediante la imposición de impuestos, la subasta ilegal y confiscación de tierras, así como el congelamiento de cuentas. The instruments to carry out this persecution can be fiscal through the imposition of taxes, the illegal auction and confiscation of land, as well as the freezing of accounts. También puede ser de tipo mediático, provocando una imagen irreal, a menudo falsa y tergiversada, sobre la fe y la religión del grupo. It can also be through media, creating an unrealistic uh, and often false and misrepresented image of the group's spirituality or religion. O puede ser silencioso, intentando borrar de toda noticia, esa noticia que revela la persecución contra el grupo religioso. Or it can be silent, trying to erase from all news the information that will reveal the persecution against a religious group. Esa forma de persecución adquiere tintes dramáticos en algunas latitudes del planeta y ni la globalización de los medios ni las redes sociales alcanzan a dimensionar la violación a los derechos humanos ni el odio vertido en contra de los grupos o líderes religiosos. This form of persecution acquires dramatic overtones in some latitudes of the planet, and neither the globalization of the media nor the social networks can reach the dimension of the violation of human uh, rights or the hatred poured against religious and spiritual groups or leaders. Desde este lado del mundo, El mundo oriental parece muy lejano, 
tan lejano que suele no existir ni en las noticias ni en las redes sociales y poco aparece en los estudios académicos relacionados con el fenómeno religioso. From my side of the world, what we call the oriental world seems very distant. So distant that it does not exist in the news nor in social networks and little appears even in academic studies related to religious persecution. Lo que se llega a estudiar, por otro lado, por los sociólogos de la religión o estudiosos del fenómeno religioso, casi nunca aborda casos de persecución y odio contra grupos religiosos de las nuevas religiones. What is studied on the other hand by our sociologists of religion or scholars of religious phenomena almost never deals with cases of persecution and hatred against new religious or spiritual movements. No así en Estados Unidos. Allá en los Estados Unidos hace unos meses se llevó a cabo la reunión anual de la Asociación para la Sociología de la Religión, una de las más importantes del mundo. El foro profundizó el caso Taiji Men y las protestas que se vienen realizando desde hace ya algunos años. Not so in the United States, there I mean in the United States. A few months ago, the annual meeting of the Association for Sociology of Religion, one of the most important such organizations in the world, was held. And the session of the meeting discussed the Taiji Man case and the corresponding protests that have been going on now for some years. El caso Taiji Man es uno de esos que jamás se estudiarían ni harían públicos en México y quizá tampoco en América Latina. Uh, the Taiji Man case is one of those that will never have been studied or publicized in Mexico and perhaps not even in Latin America. Eso hasta hoy, porque resulta urgente insistir desde nuestra posición en visibilizar esas formas que el poder público utiliza para oprimir reprimir y asediar a los nuevos grupos religiosos. Or at least uh, this was true until today because uh, it will now be urgent to insist from our position to make visible those forms that the public power uses to oppress, repress and besiege the new spiritual groups. Hace poco más de un año, en plena pandemia y con las restricciones sanitarias que eso conllevaba, en Taiwán se manifestaron más de 10.000 personas para protestar por las subastas ilegales y confiscación de tierras contra la organización espiritual Taiji Men. A little over a year ago, in the midst of the pandemic and with the health restrictions of the pandemic, More than 10,000 people demonstrated in Taiwan to protest against the illegal auctions and confiscation of land of the spiritual organization Taiji Men. Aquí es necesario precisar que usamos como sinónimos organización espiritual al de grupos religiosos, no obstante los matices y diferencias evidentes. Here I need to perhaps to pause and specify that I'm using a spiritual organization and a religious group as if they were synonyms, notwithstanding I'm aware there are nuances and differences. Regresando al tema de la protesta, hay que precisar que esta tiene una saga histórica de más de dos décadas. Hace 25 uh, Hace 25 años, el asedio contra Taiji Men inició con el arresto a su líder y otros miembros destacados de la organización. Now, returning to the Taiji Men protest, it's necessary to specify that that's a true saga, an historical saga of more than two decades. Uh, 25 years ago, what I call the siege against Taiji Men began with the arrest of its leader and other members of the organization. 
Después, tras un juicio, recibieron indemnización por encarcelamiento injusto, pero el asedio había comenzado. Later, after a trial, they were declared innocent and received the compensation for wrongful imprisonment, but the siege had begun. En el contexto de las relaciones incómodas que las dinastías y gobiernos chinos, incluidos los gobiernos de Taiwán, siempre mantuvieron con movimientos religiosos y espirituales, el asedio continuó durante las siguientes dos décadas, forzando el sistema tributario de Taiwán contra la organización espiritual Tai Jimen. Within the context of the uneasy relations that the Chinese dynasties and governments, including Taiwan's governments, always maintained with religious and spiritual movements, the siege continued for more than two decades, unleashing Taiwan's tax system against the Taiji Man's spiritual organization. Manera de referencia, es necesario revisar los trabajos expuestos en la reunión, reunión anual de la Asociación para la Sociología, en donde se estudió de manera más profunda el caso que hoy venimos comentando. For reference, I recommend you read the papers presented at the annual meeting of the Association for the Sociology of Religion, And I can personally add, they are all available in Bitter Winter, where the case we are discussing today was studied in greater depth. El caso Taiji Men, aunque remoto a nuestro punto, a México, no es aislado ni único. The case of Taiji Men, not too far away to our, our geographical location in Mexico, is, however, neither isolated nor unique. Tanto en los países asiáticos como en los de estas latitudes, la presión fiscal tributaria contra los nuevos grupos religiosos es una forma de persecución moderna de los gobiernos. In Asian countries, as well uh, in those of my part of the world, the tax pressure against the new religious and spiritual movements is a form of modern persecution by governments. In Mexico, además, el peligro es mayor porque no solo se hace referencia a elevación fiscal, sino a supuesta procedencia ilícita de los recursos de las iglesias. In fact, in Mexico, perhaps the danger is even greater because in similar cases, normally not only tax evasion is mentioned, but also the alleged illicit origin of the resources of the religious movements. Precisamente el caso Tai Jimen es importante porque hace visible este asedio y uso del poder político contra una organización de carácter espiritual, legal y legítimamente constituida. Precisely, the Tajiman case is so important because it makes visible this siege and use of political power against a spiritual, law-abiding and legitimately constituted organization. Y este caso nos permite entender el uso de la propaganda pública y la sesgada interpretación de la ley para construir un caso a todas luces improcedente. And this case allows us to understand the use of public propaganda and the bias interpretation of the law to build a case that is clearly improper. Así que desde México nos unimos a este compromiso académico e intelectual para exigir un cese a esta persecución que data ya de 25 años. Es más que justo y necesario detenerla. So from Mexico we join this academic and intellectual commitment to demand an end to this persecution that dates back 25 years 
and it's more than fair and necessary to stop it now. Muchas gracias. Buenas tardes y buenas noches. Thank you and uh, good afternoon and good evening and good night. Thank you very much, Mr. Fosos Bravo, for your uh, very informative um, lecture and for calling siege the, the attack of, sta of the state to uh, religion and particularly in the case of Tajiman. And also thanks to Professor Ventovinia, I forgot to announce it before, who provided a brilliant uh, translation impromptu. Uh, I now uh, move to uh, our last uh, guest for this first session, Ms. Christine Mir, uh, Deputy Director uh, and, uh, of, uh, of the Coordination des Associations et des Particulières pour la Liberté de Conscience. Um, she will also uh, introduce us to the second part of uh, uh, our webinar today. So it is my time to leave the floor to her. Thank you very much. I'm honored to present the following panel of Taiwan experts, scholars, and Taijimen Dizi from around the world. They will share with us their testimonies on the issue of the unjust discrimination that they have suffered for 25 years. Before listening to them, here is a new report video. This is Monk's famous artwork, The Scream. But have you ever thought about this could be people screaming out their pains of being persecuted by the tax authorities? Wearing Max with a screaming face on it, tens of thousands of people in Taiwan take to the street to shout out loud their sufferings and dissatisfaction of the broken tax system. Today, the Tax and Legal Reform League and 10-plus organizations gather in front of Taiwan's presidential office to call on all Taiwanese citizens to fight for taxpayers' rights. We want to request the government to face the problem that we are face, facing with right now in Taiwan. So especially today, we keep mentioning about the bonus, bonus, bonus. So what is the bonus? So many experts uh, to mention that the bonus is the uh, resource or the glucose from the chaos about the tax, about the tax bureau, and also a lot of the burning behavior in Taiwan. So what we learned is that uh, if you have the bonus, some people, everyone like the money, but the government, what they are doing, the major uh, responsibility for land is to protect the people. But if there's the bonus, if they want to get money, maybe they will issue the wrong tax bill. The organizers emphasize the five no's. No illegal tax bills, no threatened taxpayers to pay unreasonable tax, no illegal tax bonuses, no illegal execution bonuses and no bonuses for a malicious reporting tax evasion. They also accuse the government of imposing 400 billion NT dollars excessive tax revenue which hit a new high in history. Overdue taxes and other charges in 2020 have increased to 1,431 cases, which is 7.5 times more than that of in 2001. Many experts suspect that the soaring number is caused by the tax bonuses. Taiji Man case is one of the fabricated tax cases in Taiwan which has drawn international attention. Some human rights activists brought this case to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights and condemned the Taiwan government for tax persecution. Dr. Massimo Intravenia urged the Taiwan government to correct mistakes at a press conference in Washington, D.C. Well, the answer is precisely because it's not primarily, and certainly it's not exclusively a tax case. It's a case of human rights. It is a established to recognize principle that it is the right and the duty of uh, the international community to protect human rights. And uh, it's needed that the international community takes an interest as it is doing and takes a stand in uh, the violation of the Taiji human rights in Taiwan. Let me 
Thai Jimin is a landmark case where human rights and religious freedoms of Thai Jimin's shifu and deeds have been seriously violated. It is also a violation of um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the two international covenants. And it also have undermined and um, lowered the standards of human rights protection in democratic countries. As many um, scholars point out, Thai Jimin case is not the tax issue, it's not the domestic issue, it's actually a human rights violations case based on religious freedom. That's why we bring this case to Washington DC. We seek the international community's help because we hope that um, the governments will rectify this case and to um, return the justice and to return Thai Jimin's sacred lands. And we have persisted for 25 years. We will continue to fight for justice until the hope and justice are restored. This case shows that taxpayers' rights and freedom of belief in Taiwan have been neglected. The protesters call on the government to abolish tax incentives and injustice and protect human rights so that the positive image of Taiwan as a democracy can be maintained. Ella Lee Quintanu, Taiwan. We will now uh, listen to Venerable Ming Kwan, President of the Religionist of the Association of the Republic of China. In Buddhism, the Buddha told a story about himself. There was a fire in a forest. Many animals ran away because of the fire. Only one bird was calm. It did not fly away. It flew and flew, flew to the pool to dip in and get water, flew above the fire and flapped its wings. Then it flew back and forth several times. After flying several times, the fire was still burning. But when God saw it, he asked, Little bird, what are you doing? Little bird said, There's a fire over there. I am putting out the fire. The God just left. It is such a big fire. You are a bird. How can you extinguish this fire? As a result, the little bird said, I see a problem over there, and I will try my best to solve this problem. After speaking, it continued to fly, deep in water, and get water. The god was moved by this little bird, and he joined the ranks, fighting the fire. As soon as the god came out, there was a heavenly soldier and general, whiff, whiff. Wow, it got windy slowly. The wind slowly blew the clouds to the sky above the fire. The sky was covered with dark clouds. The lightning flashed, and the thunder rumbled, and finally it rained heavily and put out a fire. I think this story gives us inspiration, and although we have not solved this problem in 24 years, we continue to work hard. This is the year of the ox. We hope to turn things around, okay? So I have four sentences to encourage you. Turn things around. Have faith. Believe the wish will come true. Happiness spreads in a blessed field. The heart cultivates body seed. And hard working will make everything happen. We now continue with the expertise of Mr. Liu Cheng Wu is Vice Chairman of Taiwan Victim Human Rights Associations. Tai Chi is a religious group that practices martial arts and Qigong. The reason why human beings top all living things is that they ponder questions from three aspects. First, from a scientific perspective. Secondly, they wonder where they came from in a philosophical perspective. Third, they wonder where they will go in a religious perspective. Because we need to obtain happiness in reality and the strength from our culture, you feel a sense of calmness, peace, and safety. And then you begin to know where you are standing, where you came from, and where you are heading for. Otherwise, you get lost. So what I've seen from every religion is that when you get lost, it shows you the right path based on its past experience. This is the highest state of religions. So currently, in terms of freedom of religions, the grand justice have two critical interpretations. The first, as you all know, 
is the number 573 interpretation, of which the gesture states that if the religion itself is harmless, you need to tolerate. What does harmless mean? For instance, he didn't rape the woman or cheat her. There is no swindle at all. In the past, the number 490 interpretation explained beneficiality. It's wrong to discuss the beneficiality of religion. If a religion does not cause harms or violates regulation of the society, I think we should make it tolerable and acceptable. My daughters and I, the news anchor you can see, and the other one who has been at me as an official teacher, both of them, when you look at us, you can tell how pretty their mom is. We have so many differences and have almost nothing in common, but what makes us connected and so close? By our religions and faith, we tolerate, forgive, and accept each other. That's how we can have gentle and sweet smiles on our faces. We accept each other, and we can be so intimate. You got it. This is the greatest part of the freedom of religion. You continuously look for endless happiness. So the discovery of happiness relies on yourself. Let me repeat again. The finding of this kind of happiness depends on the guidance of spiritual teachers and make it possible to complete our soul as a whole. Whether it's the Holy Quran, the Bible, or the Buddhist scriptures, they all emphasize a single concept. That is void. Our first witness of this unfair situation is Madame Jilly Tsai, client experience lead in banking industry and Taiji Mendizi. Madame Tsai, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Thank you for the webinar invite. It's my pleasure to be here. This is Jilly, a Taiji Mendizi for nearly 27 years working in the banking industry. I joined Tai Juman in my 20s, the ancient rituals of worship and the strict acceptance of deeds by, the, by my shifu Dr. Hong have made me realize that Tai Juman is an ancient menpai of qigong, martial arts, and self-cultivation. I highly cherish the relationship and it has changed my life. Turning a common office worker to a peace angel traveling with Dr. Hong to many countries meeting many heads of state and government and leaders from all walks of life. And I have the honor of exchanging thoughts with about 30 presidents. Watching Shifu's interactions with these world leaders and friends, I feel deeply that the world is one and that we are working together for a sustainable future. Shifu has taken this to travel around the world in order to spread the peace culture of conscience and love, and to inspire humanity to unite through good intentions. Solidarity is identified in the UN Millennium Declaration as one of the fundamental values of international relations in the 21st century. The UN General Assembly convinced that the promotion of the culture of solidarity and the spirit of sharing is important for combating poverty. On December 22, 2005, UN decided to proclaim December 20th of each year International Human Solidarity Day, which is underpinned by human rights and supported by global partnership to lift people out of poverty, hunger, and diseases. During the sixth anniversary of the United Nations in 2005, Shifu and President Fernandez of the Republic of the Dominican Republic turned the key of the world in New York. And in 2008, President Fernandez, as the intermediary, he diffused an impending war crisis among Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela. Since politicians have their own concerns and interests, it is not easy to settle conflicts. As Shifu said, a will is as powerful as a wish. At a time of war and crisis, this key of the world brought the three heads of state together, making peace possible and their people free from suffering and fear. President Fernandez's wish will ring the bell. I hope 
people all over the world will respect each other and that love and peace will last forever in the world is the underlying power to make peace a reality. At a summit in New York, a guest sharing that if the letter I is taken out of New York's life, life becomes meaningless and confusing because they only see things from their perspectives and life is all about themselves. When they saw Dr. Hong and Taijima brothers and sisters, what they feel was how we unite can make changes. It is the difference that moves more people from different backgrounds willing to join hands to build a future of love and peace. This kind of unity and solidarity has enabled Taijima brothers and sisters to follow Shifu, Dr. Hong, in his pursuit of truth, justice, and righteousness after 25 years of suffering. We are in this together and to work hard for the people of Taiwan who, like us, are being bullied by the tax authorities. Unity is strength. Only when more people join the ranks of legal tax reform will there be hope for change. The United Nations was founded as a call for global cooperation and solidarity dedicated to promoting peace, human rights, and social and economic development for the greatest good for mankind. The common agenda presented by the UN Secretary General Antonio in September this year calls for a renewed solidarity among peoples and future generations. Human rights give people everywhere a free voice and protect citizens' ability to participate in a meaningful way in decisions that can have a huge impact on their lives. Equality is at the heart of human rights, helping us to overcome global crisis and to ensure that all people are treated without discrimination of any kind. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet said in her speech on Human Rights Day this year, global shocks have triggered a regression in human rights. The coronavirus disease has exacerbated this phenomenon. Equality is the solution. Equality is about empathy and solidarity, about understanding that we are all human beings together and that the only way forward is to work for the common good. But in Taiwan, some corrupt officials are greedy for bonuses, tearing the country apart of selfish reasons, dividing mutual trust between people and the government, driving people to the brink of poverty and even bankruptcy, and putting people in deep water due to illegal tax bills. The investigation and verification of taxes is the responsibility of the tax authorities, but the National Tax Bureau and the administrative and executive agency have set up high bonuses to rural tax officials and law enforcement officers to incriminate the people. In Taiwan, there are many tax victims and many false cases, wrongful cases, and unjust cases are caused by the bonuses how can the people trust the government when officials who have abused their power and violated the law are robbing the people of their property? In 2020, pending enforcement cases of overdue cases and fees reached 14.31 million cases, up to 7.5 times from 20 years ago. Is this caused by government officers chasing performance bonus or Taiwan people who disobey the laws? The financial industries of customers to create values in compliance with rules and regulations. The Tai Chi Man tax injustice case is a fabricated case derived from the criminal case. A wrongful tax bill poisoned Tai Chi Man for 25 years. How did they come up with this sky high tax bill amount? We have been asking them for 25 years, but got no answer. Is this the right way to serve the people? I don't know. The Taiwan government has recently allocated a budget of more than 20 billion Taiwan dollars each to the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. 
But for many years, Tai Chi men, Shifu and Deeds have been conducting culture exchanges around the world without receiving subsidies, fundraising, or accepting donations. We have visited more than 300 cities in over 100 countries in more than 3,000 cultural performances and exchanges, promoting a peace culture of conscience and love. During the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 60 online conferences were held to share the importance of a culture of conscience. Around the world, Taijima is highly acclaimed by heads of state and international friends, but is duly bullied by the Taiwan government. At home, how come we are treated in this way in Taiwan? Human rights is a universal value and the dignity of humanity cannot be violated. The country must protect people's property, health, and freedom. The Taijima case is a landmark case, just like the February 28th incident happened about 75 years ago. And the international community has been paying attention for a long time. Taiwan needs the unity of all people to urge the reform of the tax authority. We ask President Tsai Ing-wen to show courage and determination to request the National Tax Bureau to revoke the round tax bill of Tai Chi Men, return the land that was eagerly auctioned off and eagerly reverted to the state in the wrongful and false case, free the people from unjust taxes, enhance the human rights from taxation in Taiwan, promote transformational justice, and that Taiwan truly move forward freedom and democracy. It's a season for gratitude. We thank you everyone who support Tai Chi Men and stay with us. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Tsai, for your testimony. Our second witness is Mr. Shirakawa Chaya, university student in Japan, and Taiji Mendizi, who will share with us his views on the mistreatment of Taiji men in Taiwan during the last 25 years. みなさんこんにちは。私は白川和俊です。私は子供の頃から体が弱くて病気がちな子供でした。頻度平均に平均して年に14回ほど入院したりしました。この状態は、この状況は5、6年間続き、保険会社でさえ保証をカバーすることを拒否するほどの回数でした。また、私は喘息の持病があったので、精神的、身体的な苦痛もあり、
外部社会の悪影響を受けることはありません私は子供の頃から台湾の総統や政府関係者が対チームを称賛することをよく耳にし,してきました私が徐々に大人に成長していくにつれ私を良好に育ててくれた対チームは不条理な外的圧力にさらされていることに気づきました検査官対チームは本当に化け物を育て,て,育てましたかこれは本当に馬鹿げた基礎でこれは本当に馬鹿げた基礎ですよね証拠を見つけることすらできずしかもそれらの証拠の代わりとして数分の目に黒い影を見たためだと馬鹿げたことすら言いましたよね証拠が全てにおいて重要であるこの世の中にどうすればそのような罪を実証することができますかその後、この検査官の暴漢乱は実際に昇進もされたのでしょうかさらにひどいのは、挙兵の基礎上を引用し、違法な徴税を課し続けた国税局です。この徴税は、この徴税は私が生まれる。25年も前からの古い徴税です。民国96年4月13日、ハイチムは無罪、脱税、徴税法違反はないと裁判所が判定し、ついに起訴は不当だったと認められたため、誰もがとても安心になったことを覚えています。それでも国税局は裁判所判決を言うことを認めないとの意向を表明し違法な所税を課し続けたことで私はそれを本当に理解しがたい思いを募らせました誰もが裁判所の第三判の判決を認め従うべきではないのでしょうかそのその後にいわゆる税制上の賞金制度の存在が明るみとなりそれが支払われている事実が判明したことを私は知りました。人はお金のために死ぬ。それは本当にその通りです。その時に私は数夫がなぜ私たちに良心運動を実践するように導くかのかを心から理解しました。国に良心のない役人がいるとしたら人々は本当に不幸な状況でしか生きられないからです。そして私たちは台湾総統が人々の苦しみの声に耳を傾けてくれることを願い何度も総統を踏まえ大通りのデモパレードに参加しました母からはキャラクターの服を着せてもらい私と妹をパレードに連れながら途中急いでトイレを探し書き込むとたくさんの疲れ果てた数ョン数値たちの光景も目にしましたそれからほぼ毎年のように大統領官邸にも向かいました本当にきつくてつらかった記憶です私が中学校時代に日本で生活していた頃に日本は文化遺産を非常に重視する国であると実感しました伝統的な技能を学びたいのなら様々な試練を経て古代の伝統や習慣修行に従う必要があります文化学校家族さまざまな地域社会の連携を通じて私たちが国際社会に貢献し他国を尊重し最終的に国際社会国際社会の平和を促進するための指導を計画し、体系的に実施しています。したがって、日本政府は国民を尊重し、保護しています。しかし、台湾はどうですか私の個人的な経験によると、台湾政府は正義を軽視するだけではなく、人々の生きる権利を台無しにし、人々を恐怖と不安の中にさらしています。そのような行為は、世界かから苦笑されていませんかどんな外交の会話がありますか
。私は日本の友人と向き合う際、このような民主主義は本当に恥ずかしくて自慢することができません。今日は国際児童人権デーです。私は子供の頃から毎年相当不満、大通りの業務パレードで相当に世界の子供たちに与えられた生存、平等、公正な反,反裁判に参加するための権利の主張を訴えてきました。しかし25年経過した現在も異平所税は未だ取り消されていません。これは本当に台湾の民主主義にとって非常に致命的な被害と現実です。私は蔡英文大統領にもう一度主張します。もっと若者の声に声を大切にしてくれませんか次に例を挙げてみせてくださいタイチームンが素晴らしいとは言われなくても結構ですただし国税局によるタイチームンへの迫害を止めてください違法なことを正してください子供のような国民を愛することこそがあなたの政治的理念ではありませんか私有財産を独占する行為は本当に見苦しいことです。私は相当に本当の正義と改革を貫いてくださることを強く願っております。ありがとうございました。Now, I give the floor to Mr. Jackie Liu, Global Business Development Manager, Taiji Mendizi, who will tell us more about what he experienced.、Uh, Mr. Thank you. The floor is yours.、Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes.、Uh, firstly,、uh, I would like to thank you for the opportunity provided so that I can have the chance to speak here. Thank you. My name is Jackie Liu, working for Techno. Technical company and also Taiji m e n d i z Yesterday is International Solidarity Day. Literally, it hopes every individual on earth can reflect on if we can unite and work together for what we have done in every aspect for the past years. Over the year, COVID 19 variant spread around the world without stop sign owing to vaccine worldwide unbalanced distribution and people's cover up of the epidemic. It is because of people's lack of solidarity. Each government only cared about their own without thinking about other countries. Each individual only cared about themselves for personal interests without taking care of other people. The consequence is we haven't seen a light yet in the tunnel for COVID 19. The other important thing this year is climate change rapidly, owing to global warming. Many countries stayed together in COP26 to come out some actions to address the global warming issues. However, these counteractions have either been rejected or compromised because the government would like to maintain economic growth. Can we just work together to cherish our Mother Earth with fewer personal desire and interest and let more people, passion involved, and put economic growth aside? Be honest. All those topics I've mentioned here have nothing to do with me until I joined Tai Chi Men. After joining Tai Chi Men, my Shifu told me I need to love myself and love the people around me. He led us in person to travel around the world to promote love and peace, letting people learn that conscience is the foundation of love and peace. The love, with conscience, the love without conscience is blind and unbalanced. The peace without love is a slogan. It won't work. So we need every, each one of us conscious to be awakened. Let the conscious guide you, love yourself, and further love others. The peace will come true. I recall my Sifu met Pope Benedict XVI in Rome, Italy, back to 2005. He told Pope, Words need peace, peace needs love, and love needs to be balanced. A vice president of Christian school has ever mentioned that one day when we die, the God will ask, How many people you help for your entire life? I think the help here n o t refer to how much money I donated, but how many people I helped to make them willing to change themselves for the better and for the society. 
and those will have people living and working peacefully and the world being harmony. All those teachings from Shifu makes me start to think and care about the world like sustainable development. And Tai Chi Man Fall's case even bring me to understand more about fairness and justice around the world. This Tai Chi Man Fall's case is not only our concern, but also Taiwan society concern. And even more people around the world are all concerned. Now I understand that. Tai Chi Minh Force case is the one that the government cracked down religious organizations to consolidate power by using judicial and tax law illegally. Government framed Tai Chi Minh and fabric Tai Chi Minh Force case and manipulate it. However, Tai Chi Minh is the only one organization pursuing telling the truth from false, right from wrong, good from bad among all the political crackdown. So Tai Chi Man false case is not only our concern, but also those people caring about Taiwan human rights concern. It also can be a reference for all the countries around the world. Here are some topics I would like to highlight here. One, violation of human rights. Presumptions of innocence is the value for human rights. A prosecutor say you are guilty, he needs evidence. That's the fundamental of rule of law. That's the value of human rights. Government issued a tax bill and it also need evidence as well. However, Taiwan National Tax Bureau collected illegal tax bill without any evidence. If you don't follow, you will be punished and fined for a huge amount of money. And furthermore, if you would like to appeal, you need one third of illegal tax bill amount so that you can have the right to appeal or your case will be enforced and you will be custody and be banned on travel. However, in US, it only takes 60 US dollars to call for judgment. You know, it's like government give you a shit which does not belong to you. You need to eat that one third of shit first, then the government can review your case. How ridiculous it is. It has already violated human rights a lot. Two, violation of, violation of rule of law. At least pay some amount of money. Taiwan National Tax Bureau issue an illegal tax bill, not based on the law. You come to appeal, he negotiate with you. At least you pay some, um, some amount of tax bill. Is tax bill collection is commercial deal without following the law? When I saw the legislator question the Minister of Finance on the video, tax collection and government budget should be assets based on the law. According to the info from Huang Kung Guang, the ex tax officer mentioned that there are a specific audit team focused on big amount of tax evasion case. The amount they focus to collect cannot exceed more than 1 million US dollars for each one each year. How the government can collect up to 13 billion US dollars extra a year? How the number come out? What's the ground for law? Three, loss of conscience. Tax officers and enforcement officers are getting bonus with no legal ground. Officer is public servant and should serve people. But nowadays, officers will do anything illegal to get bonus. Tax officers issue no legal ground tax bill to get profit without being accountability. Enforcement officers insist enforcement even they know there's still some doubt or even it is innocent they still keep doing it in order to get bonus. Furthermore, the bonus policy has been abolished by Congress previously, but now it has been returned back later by different budget category in Congress. So only conscious can solve all the issues. If an officer has conscious, he will do the right things. He will follow presumptions of innocence. He will protect every individual human right. He will follow the rule of law. He won't negotiate with people like at least pay some amount of money. He won't lose and betray his conscience. He will stand out for fairness and justice. It is very important for Taiwan and also for the world. Human right is an universal value for the, for the world. Democracy and rule of law are the goal for many countries. Conscience is above all. Without conscience, democracy and rule of law are castles in the air. Without conscience, human right is a slogan. With conscience, government can unite and work together to resolve the COVID-19 crisis. 
with conscious government can come out an idea and let Mother Earth breathe again and have sustainable development. With conscious government can adopt a good policy and let the fairness and justice, justice prevail. With conscious government can let every individual on earth having food and making money. People live and work peacefully and work in harmony. Today, I would like to call upon all the people around the world to wake up your conscience. Only when conscience are awakened, we can unite and inherit the ancestors' wisdom and open a chapter of peaceful world for our future. And thank you for your, all your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Now we will listen to Mr. Chin Li's testimony of what the Taiji men have endured all these years. Mr. Li is executive assistant to CEO of an advertising agency and Taiji Man Dizzy. Mr. Li, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm Xing. And it's my pleasure to be here to share my own story. When I was two and a half years old, I followed my parents to into the Taiji Man. I'm 30 years old this year. It can be said that my life and Taiji Man go forward simultaneously. When I was young, I didn't realize how special this kind of group process is. It's just that I grew up slowly in, a, uh, in this warm and big family. After I grew up, I looked back and found that this is the unique school education in the world. It provides me with a unique growth environment and the nourishment of Taiji Man culture, which is reflected in me. I'm the only child in my family. In addition to my parents, I also receive a lot of love from my Shifu and Shimu, as well as the friendship and care of my brothers and sisters of different ages, especially the brothers and sisters who grew up with me. It is an experience that most people don't have. We practiced, studied, played, talked together, and shared happiness and worries since childhood, and were even closer than average siblings. But this kind of happiness was destroyed 25 years ago because of a fraud made out of nothing. The Shifu was in trouble. Our home was also one of the illegal searches that year and it happened in the early morning of Christmas Eve. I was only five years old at the time, and when I heard the doorbell, someone came in. I thought it was a guest coming and wanted to go out to say hello. My mom took me, took me and stayed with me in the room. I actually don't know what happened. And when I walked out of the room, that my dad was no longer there. It was the year later that I learned that uh, on the day, the Bureau of Investigation officer came to my home with a search warrant with the wrong address and took my father directly to the Bureau of Investigation for questioning, just because my dad was interviewed two days ago about his practice at Tai Chi Man. The prosecutor used white terror tactics to silence the people. Moreover, the prosecutor used the media to make a lot of sensational and untrue reports firstly accusing Taiji men as an evil religious group, causing public opinion to judge before trial. Since that, my kindergarten teachers and parents of children look at me differently. And even my grandparents who loved me misunderstood us, which made me cry in anger at that time. Now, it seems that our family's experience is just a small part of thousands of victims of Taiji men incident, but it is warning to offic official that one violation of the law by the prosecutor will lead to more violations. Just as one lie leads to more lies and countless lies, and the violation of the law by a public authority that does not respect human rights will also harm thousands of families. The harm has been caused and there's no recovery. The important thing is that human rights must be implemented with the government to reduce the number of people suffering as a result. Although history will repeat itself. The more people stand up for tax reform, it can save more people from fear and hurts, thus increasing human happiness and hope, just like what we are doing these years. The human rights persecution is not only the loss of property, 
but most serious is reputation and spiritual damage, invisible psychological persecution for 25 years, which is really more painful than prison. If it were not for the righteousness of Tai Chi Man Master and disciples to protect the body, the average pe person and organization that was subjected to such a long term torture would have collapsed. Why the Tai Chi Man Master and disciples persevered? persevere it to this day. This is more proof that it comes from the power of faith and belief. If it were not for the close bonding of disciples and master, how could this be possible? Shifu leaders to 25 years of litigation, petitions, and pleadings, not only to vindicate the unjust case of Taiji men, but also to promote justice and tax reform. We also use Taiji Man culture to lead the world feel the importance of love and peace and the nourishment of true goodness and beauty. I remember in my school days, I was always very busy on weekend because of the cultural performance practicing with Taiji Man brothers and sisters. Sifu teaching us to has allowed, Sifu's teaching has allowed me to learn and develop my potential in this process whether in terms of academic performance, problem solving, hosting, communication, and interpersonal relationship. I'm always be recognized by my elders and peers. Tajiman is not, not just a school, but a big family that cultivate physical, mental, and spiritual health. My Shifu is not just a teacher, but a spiritual leader who can develop wisdom for all ages. My growth, my belief, are effect of my 30 years of personal experience and will not be shaken by case of any mal malicious slander. When I went to the United Kingdom to start in graduate school, I got along with people from all over the world and feel deeply about the differences between Eastern and Western cultures, especially courage and freedom. European and American students have the courage to fight for and express themselves. This is reflected in the social affairs, which is the courage to speak out and defend justice, freedom, and human rights. Such a spirit uh, is the fact the truth that Shifu has been teaching us. It is only true to distinguish between right and wrong, and it is only true to act in good conscience. In contrast to the Taiji Man case, which has fabricated from beginning to end, the offending judge did not admit his mistake and continued to fabricate more fakes without conscience to persecute an international cultural and public welfare practice, practice group. This is really unbelievable to the international community and as a major stand on Taiwan's democratic politics. Human right is a belief and human right is also a kind of compassion. The former Minister of Finance of Taiwan once public, publicly said, if you want people to pay taxes, you don't have to talk about the human rights. How terrifying and uh, dis disregarding human rights of such concept. What's worse is that the entire tax system is collectively, collectively infected with this virus of disregard for human rights. And the Taiji Man case is a typical example of a bureaucrat committing crimes collectively and protecting each other. The abuse of public power by the tax authorities is evident everywhere from the making, relief, and enforcement of tax penalties to the overstepping of judicial decisions, ignoring the question, questions of the legislators, and trampling on the correction of the sup supervisor yen with one text dominating over the other and usurping the basic right of people. The victimization of the Tai Chi Man, Shifu and disciples is a scar in history of legal taxation. And the, and the vindication of the case is just a return of justice. However, more importantly, I hope that the government will not let the action of a few violators continue the mistake of the old era without improving them thus hurting Taiwan's international democratic recognitions and affecting the international friendship. 
the people's eyes are discerning, and for the well-being of all people living in this land, the government should also take the courage to, to vindicate the unjust cases, implement human rights, and reform the legal taxation to be worthy of conscience and the votes of the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Now I give the floor to Mr. Paul Jung. He is working for technology industry and he is Tai Jimen Dizi. Let's hear what he has to say about the discrimination suffered by Tai Jimen in Taiwan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. It's my honor to speak here on the 26th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties which is critical to the environment and the destiny of all humankind. Was held in Glasgow, Scotland, the UK from November 1st to 12th this year. The two-week conference gave the global leaders and experts in different fields to discuss climate target and the action to slow down global warming. The COP26 adopted the Glasgow Climate Pact, which called for maintaining the Paris Agreement to limit global warming to a target of 1.5 degrees Celsius and to gradually reduce the use of coal. Just outside the conferences, tens of thousands of people of different ages, countries, races, skin colors, and religions march on the street to express their opinion strongly through slogan, paintings, and action drama calling on political leaders to take action to stop the negative effects of climate change. The deterioration of the Earth's environment is due to human greed. The endless desire has led to the over-exploitation and destruction of limited natural resources. For the next generation's living environment, parents brought their young children to join the parade. Similarly, there is a group of people in Taiwan who have been working for five, 25 years. They gather for tax reform, taxpayers' human rights, people's property, and the right to life. Although Taiwan has been lifting martial law for many years, some officials' mind has not been yet lived the male functioning tax administrative remedy has resulted in a lot of tax victims. There are many cases. Miss Wu wanted to buy a cram school, but failed. The National Taxation Bureau charged Miss Wu with the taxes owned by the former person in charge of the cram school. With the suffering physically and mentally, Ms. Wu suffered from depression and cancer. Another case is the Mr. Ye. He is a scientist who owns a patent DNA chip. The National Taxation Bureau issued him an unreasonable tax bill and restricted him from leaving Taiwan, resulting in the divorce from his wife in the USA. Among these tax cases, the one with the largest number of the victims is the Tai Chi Man case. Without any detailed checking, the Taxation Bureau issued the illegal tax bill based on the invalid indictment. After the call, rule that the indictment was invalid. The Taxation Bureau did not comply with the court's decision to cancel the tax bill and illegally seized an auction of the Tai Chi Man's property. The National Taxation Bureau can issue its interpretive later and actually expand the scope of taxation on enterprises. Not only the Taiwan people, but also Hong Kong enterprises who own well-known crossing brand are prosecuted by the Taxation Bureau for illegal tax bills. When international companies leave the country because of high tax risk and are not willing to invest more in Taiwan, 
there will be a fewer job opportunities for the people in Taiwan. This will have negative impact on the economy development. It's not good for the people of the country. Every year, the Taiwan Tax Asian Bureau takes up the tax bonus payment that has no legal authorization. They pay the bonus to tax officials according to their performance. The bonus is like Apple of Eden, learning tax officials to fall and issue illegal tax bills to cheat of the performance. Ms. Wu, Mr. Ye, and tens of thousands of families in the Tai Chi men are all tax victims of an unfair and unjust tax system. In recent years, some people in Taiwan established the alliance fighting for fair tax, holding a lot of seminars and activities to raise citizens' awareness of taxpayers' human rights, promoting tax reform and work for fair and just tax system. I'm a Tai Chi Man Dis, and I feel the warmth and love in the Tai Chi Man. Since I practice Tai Chi Man Qigong, my health has improved significantly. My nose allergy and hemorrhoids that followed me for many years have been cured. Because I want to ratify the Tai Chi Man case, I protest on the street and perform the action drama on the stage. Whenever there is a protest, I'm always there under the sun in the cold, in the rain, year after year. On the stage, many experts and scholars speak out for fair and just tax system. Some protests took five to six hours in the city bus on the south of Taiwan. Some protesters took a long flight to Taiwan from overseas and brought their family to participate in the protest. They earn my deep respect and admiration. People are the masters of the country. Once the people point out the mistake made by the country, the ruling authority should follow their conscience and correct the mistake immediately. When conscience is there, justice is never absent. I believe that we are moving forward towards justice and we'll soon head through the darkness to reach the light. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Young, for this relevant description of what is being lived by the Taiji men. I would like to thank you for all your testimonies that demonstrate the relentless prejudice suffered by the Taiji men at the ends of the Taiwanese government for 25 years now. It is time for this unjust and hurtful situation to end and for the Taiji men to be rehabilitated in their rightful place. Thank you. So I think now uh, I give the floor to Mr. Willy Fautré for the conclusion. I forgot to unmute, sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Christine, for giving me uh, the floor now for, for the conclusions. Uh, <clears throat> I would first like to recontextualize the introductory speeches of uh, Angelica Berlino, Massimo Intravigni, and Sara Pozos Bravo as well as the testimonies that we have just heard during our commemoration of the International Human Solidarity Day. The concept of uh, solidarity has underpinned the work of the United Nations since the birth of the organization. The creation of the UN drew the peoples and nations 
of the world together to promote peace, human rights, social and economic uh, development. The UN was founded on the basic premise of unity and harmony among its members, expressed in the concept of collective security that relies on the solidarity of its members to unite to maintain international peace and uh, security. The United Nations concern about global poverty and the concept of solidarity are also historically closely linked to each other. On the 18th of September 2000 already, the UN General Assembly adopted the Millennium Declaration in which solidarity is identified as one of the fundamental values of international relations in the 21st century. In this de declaration, it was stressed that those who either suffer or benefit least deserve help from those who benefit most. It means that global challenges have to be managed in a way that distributes the costs and burdens fairly in accordance with basic principles of equity and social justice. Consequently, in the context of globalization and the challenge of growing inequality, strengthening the of international solidarity was declared indispensable. Concrete steps then needed to be made. On the 20th of December 2002, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution establishing the World Solidarity Fund, which was set up in February of the next year. Its objective was to eradicate poverty and promote human and social development in developing countries, in particular among the poorest segments of their populations. Three years later, on the 22nd of December 2005, the UN General Assembly, by another resolution, identified solidarity as one of the fundamental and universal values that should underlie relations between peoples in the 21st century, and in that regard decided to proclaim the 20th of December of each year International Human Solidarity Day. Since then, the UN has broadened its scope far beyond the global poverty issue. International Human Solidarity Day is now a day to celebrate our unity in diversity. A day to remind governments to respect their commitments to international agreements. A day to raise public awareness of the importance of solidarity. A day to encourage debate on the ways to promote solidarity for the achievement of the sustainable development goals, including poverty eradication. A day of action to encourage new initiatives for poverty eradication. What about solidarity nowadays? Humankind is currently confronted with global threats, such as climate change, the COVID-19 pandemics, religious fanaticism and terrorism, or dangerous tensions between several great powers competing for world leadership. The negative impact of climate change on human life, fauna and flora on our planet can only be corrected and solved if all nations and all human beings unite all their efforts in the same direction. To imagine a new way of life and new forms of development which respect nature. Solidarity is a must if one wants to preserve the future of our children and grandchildren. The COVID-19 pandemic cannot be solved selfishly 
at home by rich countries. The virus does not know human borders. Vaccines and efficient treatments, still to be found, must be made available to all at the same time. Scientific research has quickly ignored any border and solidarity between researchers has immediately prevailed for the sake of human life, social and political stability, as well as the preservation of economic development. Religious fanaticism has led to terrorism, endless wars and conflicts. International cooperation, another name for solidarity, is also a must if one wants to limit their impact. In terms of geopolitics, China and the United States are at loggerheads with each other. China wants to conquer Taiwan. Russia is aggressive in its dealings with the US, the EU and NATO. All these geopolitical tensions increase the risks of international conflicts between the present day great powers. The UN regularly calls upon the solidarity of its member states to defuse such tensions and crises for the sake of peace. Now, what about the international solidarity with Taijiman? Christmas is a time of miracles, Massimo said earlier. In addition to the transgenerational uh, solidarity, which has emerged in Taijiman itself to denounce the injustice, the movement Dr. Hong and the disease have been victims of, another transnational solidarity wave has pushed Taijiman to new horizons. Massimo has raised awareness about Taijiman's situation among scholars in religious studies and in academic circles. The spin-offs of this work have been highlighted by Sarah Pozos Bravo when she hinted at a specific session about Taijiman held in the framework of the annual meeting of the Association for the Sociology of Religion, one of the most important such organizations in the world. She said, and I quote her, without shedding light to the Taiji Man case among scholars, it would never have been studied or publicized in Mexico and perhaps not even in Latin America. Advocacy for the case of Taiji Man has also been developed among human rights organizations at the US Commission on International Religious Freedom and the State Department, members of the European Parliament and national parliaments of the European Union, think tanks and so on. Taijimen and his Dizi go on publicly protesting and raising their voices, not only in Taiwan, but also in the major centers of international political power, such as the capital in the United States. These networks of solidarity with Taijiban are closely working together and coalescing for the sake of justice in the Taijiban case. These scholars and activists became friends with Dizzy and between themselves creating a global community which will not go away until the case is solved, Massimo said. This is the miracle of Christmas this year. And as Angelica Bertino said earlier, and I quote her, looking at what you are doing, mobilizing professionals around the world to speak out on your case, I think you have all the solidarity in the world in this battle of yours, unquote. And in light with Massimo's story about Scrooge in Charles Dickens' tale, Christmas Carol, she added, selfishness and the exploitation of people 
for selfish purposes are the main obstacle to the realization of a world in which the culture of peace prevails. So, wake up, Taiwan. The time has come to open your eyes and your ears to the calls for justice in the Taiji Man case and to find an enlightened solution. Thank you for your attention for these uh, conclusions. And I think that we'll now have an animation uh, movie about three pigs and a big wolf. Thank you very much. The Three Little Pigs and the Big Wolf. Characters, Big Brother Pig, Second Brother Pig, Little Brother Pig, The Big Wolf, Narrator. Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs. She had wanted her piglets to learn how to be independent. So when they were old enough, she sent them out to build their own houses. It's time for us to venture out into the world and start new lives. Yes, since we have all grown up, we can survive on our own. Let's split up. Wait, brothers, I think we should build our house nearby. In case there's any trouble in the future, we can help each other out. I agree with you, brother. Well, I agree too, but I don't think that there will be any trouble. After that, the three little pigs started to go shopping for their house, building materials, and furniture. I want to buy a dehumidifier. I don't want my house musty. I've always wanted to live in a detached house. I'll build a three-story house. I think I should buy a plot of land first, then think about what kind of house I want to build. After a few weeks, Big Brother Pig and Second Brother Pig had built and settled in their new homes. But a big wolf had been silently spying on the three little pigs from the beginning. The dehumidifier I brought broke down and caught on fire. My house and all the furniture inside so was all burnt down. The dehumidifier company gave me $1 million to compensate for my losses. At this moment, the big wolf sneakily approached the big brother pig. Oh no! Help! Help! It's the big wolf! Piggy, don't be afraid. I'm not going to eat you. I see you have an extra $1 million of income in your bank. As long as you give me $200,000 in taxes, I won't eat you. What? My house was burned down and the money I received was a form of compensation. How could it be considered my income? Oh, what compensation? If there's money in the account, I'll assume it's income. No, it is income. That's insane. I already used all the money to rebuild my house. Plus, it is a compensation, not an income. There wasn't even any profit from it. There's no way I am giving it to you. At that moment... The big wolf sneakily approached the second piggy's house. Piggy, I have seized and auctioned off your $2.5 million home because you have an unpaid $18,000 traffic ticket. You can't live here anymore. Get out of here! After saying that, the big wolf kicked the second brother pig out and seized the house with his family. What? I didn't even get a penalty notice. How could you seize a $2.5 million house when there is only a 18000 traffic ticket? I'm going to be homeless and live on the street. What can I do? I have to go to Little Brother Pig for help right away. So Big Brother Pig and Second Brother Pig went to Little Brother Pig for help. Brothers, what happened to you? Why are you so scared? My house was burned down, and a big wolf took the chance to rob me and ask for money. That big wolf also came to me, and even auctioned off my house. Oh no! It turns out that big wolf did the same things to you. To tell you the truth, I bought a plot of land before. The animal court clearly told the big wolf not to auction my land. But he and the wolf family violated the law and illegally auctioned off my land and nationalized it anyways. Poor little piggy. It's all because of a fabricated tax bill 10 years ago, which put the tax bill of a narpig with the same name as yours on your head for six years. You were just a baby at that time. How could you in have income and pay tax? The court had already ruled the tax bill was wrong. But 
the big wolf only withdrew the tax bills for five years and kept the last bill alive. Because of the remaining tax bill, there is no way for you to access your land. Now he could even force you to auction up off unlawfully. You are right. The big wolf is going too far. But don't worry. I believe that as long as we are united, we can defeat the big wolf. Therefore, the three little pigs joined the Fair Tax Reform Alliance to speak up for themselves and the whole village. They discovered that in addition to themselves, there were other animal friends who had been, who were being persecuted by the big wolf. They realized that legal and tax persecution had been going on in the village for a long time. Seeing so many cases of tax victims, some even crying along in the corner, some even wanting to commit suicide, I think we are right to stand up and speak out for all of us. Because of the help of my partners in the Fair Tax Reform Alliance, the Big Wolf had revoked my unjustified tax bill. Great, because of everyone's help, the Big Wolf had returned the illegally auction house to me too. Now I want to use my own power to help more people. Since then, other animals have joined the ranks of the Fair Tax Reform Alliance in Act 1219, demanding the reform of the unjustified tax system. I have been getting very itchy ears lately. I feel like a lot of people have been saying negative things about me. Stop talking! It's too much for my ear! The big wolf, unable to withstand the pressure of public opinion, finally escaped from the village on his own. From then on, all the animals in the village lived happily again. Do you think this is only a story? In fact, these events are real in our lives. Thank you all. I think it's the 